Okay. Continuing with God's book that he dictated to me. Isaiah 53 in the day of the Lord. Just as he dictated the Torah to Moses. This is chapter 21, which I've been on for some time. There's already 12 parts to it. I'm hoping we can get it done at 13. Uh, I'm going to read the paragraph I finished up with uh, on part 12. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not centered. Well, it'll start to fade on us. That. Oh. And God would have me tell you that, in fact, he dictated the entirety of the Hebrew Bible. The prophets, they didn't write those, uh, their chapters, the 20 prophets or so, in the book of the prophets. Now, each one of them had the Spirit of God alight upon them, and God is in his Spirit. The Spirit of God alights upon it, so does God. And that's true for Isaiah 11, for the Moshiach, the twig of the shoot of the stump of Jesse. He could just as well read the Spirit of God and God upon the twig of the shoot of the stump of Jesse. And that makes you a man in divine beings. The man who wrestled with Jacob and God spoke and changed his name to Israel, man in divine beings, right? That's just, they just, God said, I got to go change uh, Jacob's name. And they found a man near where Jacob was sleeping, his head on a stone. Spirit entered him, and God entered him, and God said to him, I have something for you to do. I am the God of this land. And the man would have said, okay, let's go. Let's do it. What do you need? Because <laughs> God controls the conversation. <laughs> and he said, there's a man. See that man over there? I want you to wrestle with him. My power surrounds you. Don't worry about it. Nobody's going to get hurt. And speaking through him, it would have come from the man himself. He can speak through me. He spoke through Moses. He said his prophet like Moses, that he would uh, uh, put his words in his mouth and he would speak with God, would basically have him speak. They, they said Moses was his veritable mouthpiece on earth. But it's the words that came out of the man's mouth. That man wrestling with Jacob would not have said, Jacob, I am changing your name to Israel. That came from God. That's how you know. And it happens in these videos quite a bit. Okay, picking up. Chapter 21, part tw uh, 13. That, if he made himself an offering for guilt, Midrash, commentary. It is an offer, an offering of oneself to God for the guilt of sinning of the Jewish people. The witnesses in the first six verses combined by quotes. In return for possibly seeing his children and having long life as a covenant between him and God. Because he agrees by this offering, he's agreeing to go to God's final refinement, which God intentionally left out in 53 so nobody could figure it out. But you can find it in the book of Job, the book of Jonah, uh, clearly the book of Ezekiel, which is the key to understanding 53. And uh, now you find out the final refinement is... Um, in chapter 53 of Isaiah. The offering is only a test of his devotion to God, as was the binding of Isaac. When the test of devotion is set before the righteous servant, the new covenant has already arrived. If you look at Malachi 3, 
God says, I'm sending my messenger, who is Elijah, before me to clear the way, and I shall return to my temple, the purpose that might prosper. That's his purpose. He wants to live amongst the Jewish people in Israel on Mount Zion, not the Temple Mount, once again. And the angel of the covenant that you desire is already on the way. So before God gets to me and talks to me when I'm 50, came to me at birth, orchestrated my life, but didn't let me know about it until I was 50 years old to make sure I fit these verses of 53 and was prepared for the task in front of me. That's performing the task of the prophet like Moses, already accomplished by this book. That's what's unique about Moses. God dictated the Torah to him. God dictated this book and another book, the life of God's righteous servant, which, of course, is me, Moshe, um, to show how I fit the verses. But that covenant is a covenant of sin forgiveness. And this is more important for the Christians because Jesus knew he used Malachi 1 to describe his cousin, John the Baptist, as Elijah. And he leaves out. Now, he, I'm the Lord, send my messenger before me. He used that to describe John the Baptist as Elijah. He leaves out. He leaves out the angel of the covenant you desire is already on the way. Because you know what that means? All the Jews were sin free. Any sacrifice that you want to make up about Jesus wasn't for forgiving sins because nobody was sinning. Everybody was sinless. But for me, well, let me just read it. God's words. When the test of devotion is set before the righteous servant, the new covenant has already arrived. And of course, I knew nothing of this at that time. And all of the iniquities and sins of the Jewish people are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. The guilt and emotion of the witnesses, the first six verses, is from not following the laws and teachings of God by the Jewish people. God's forgiveness of the sins removes the guilt. So the guilt's been removed. Well, the job of the righteous servant to make the many righteous, well, I've got, I am the righteous servant, Moshe, and I have the covenant of sin forgiveness with me. It's not going to be any problem of making the witnesses of the first six verses uh, come back to Judaism because I'm going to let them know all Jewish people all your sins even the 70% that's not observant everybody if they come back to synagogue worshiping God and uh, learning the Hebrew Bible in other words they write Torah on their own heart and if they start with sin, if you got, many people have sins they don't think Yom Kippur takes care of. Because it's still up to God whether he accepts your request, your prayer, uh, that he forgive uh, all sins that you've done. But this is, this is across the board. Everybody clean slate. And I think it's going to be a big draw to many Jews, uh, observant, non-observant alike. But you've got to be observant if you're going to go into the scroll of remembrance. And so I think we're going to touch a great number of non-observant Jews. And they're going to say, well, my daddy, all, you know, they're going to have all kinds of different reasons. Say, well, it sounds like God's here and this is real for those who are like atheists. And this and that. Draw them back. Back to the test of the devotion. So, well, the test of the devotion is, will you make the many righteous as my prophet? But for you to do that, I have to put you through what I call the fire refinement. 
Not unlike with the Jewish people. They've been in a fire refinement from the beginning because of the hatred of the world towards them. It's because they're the chosen as much as anything. And uh, they say they're the chosen. It's just like me saying I'm the righteous servant Moshe. People just, you know, how are we going to believe that? You believe it because I can't possibly have this knowledge. It's not possible. No sage or rabbi on the face of the planet now or at any time in all of Judaism has known these things that I'm teaching. And they have a lot of false teachings. that are pointed out in the book. It's why it's hard to get a, a, a large size Jewish publisher to publish them. But until publishing is what activates the two covenants I have. I also have the covenant of friendship. So that's the test of the devotion. Well, it was kind of easy for me because it said might have long life. I had to trust that that might was going to be dropped, that I would get long life if I went through this. And uh, you don't say no to God in any way. I mean, he didn't do this with Ezekiel. The whole chose to crush him with the disease is to show the Christians the man described as blemished. You can't put your unblemished Lamb of God, Jesus, into this. He doesn't fit, and he's not a Jew. I mean, and he is a Jew, and it describes a Gentile, according to the scripture. And that's me. The test of devotion is revealed here with Jeremiah 30, 31 providing when God is coming with the new covenant. The time to come in Jeremiah 31, there's three of them. And the third one is, I'll make a new covenant with you. Well, the only place you can find that is Malachi 3, where God announces to the day of the Lord and a big change to it. There's seven prophets in total that discuss day of the Lord, and God completely changes it. Even in the time of the Essenes, who wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls, that personified Jesus, but never wrote a word about it. They believed. Uh, that the, the day of the Lord meant all evil left the earth in one way or another, being killed or just changing or, I don't know, not disappearing. But And, and that's kind of where you get in Rambam picked up on the Messianic era that is not in the Hebrew Bible. All the prophets more or less said the same thing until you get to Malachi and it's God's last words on the subject and he completely changes it. <clears throat> he says, I know there's plenty of people out there who do not heed and revere me, my name, uh, sinners, and they're not going, and so I'm preparing a scroll of remembrance for those who do. Guess who's not in that scroll of remembrance today? This is the day of the Lord. The rabbis, no, when Moshe comes, and why they always are calling out, come Moshe, come, I don't know. Because when I come, God has a reckoning and dismisses all of the shepherds. That's the rabbis. All of them. And appoints Moshe, me, his servant David, a shepherd, a teacher, which is what I'm doing right now, teaching. As the only Shepherd, he recognizes. They have to teach this book and straighten out Judaism and bring it into the modern day and out of antiquity for God. This is his day. He says, well, I am the God of Israel, but Judaism has just made a left turn and it's been teaching man's word and it's time to straighten it out. They shouldn't be offended by it and also give them something new to talk about. <coughs> Okay, there are only two covenants that have not been delivered. The new covenant for a time to come in Jeremiah was sin forgiveness and the covenant of friendship. That's in Ezekiel. 
The covenant of friendship comes with the shepherd. God's servant David. And the anointed one of God, Moshe, whom he calls David. The angel of the covenant must be the angel of the new covenant. The phrase, because basically he grants the covenant of friendship while in, in the same page where he's appointing me as the only teacher. They're, we're together. The phrase, he is already coming, means he arrives before God who comes to covenant with the Gentile before he returns to his temple. He had to prepare me as his representation and prophet like Moses. He must have a visible representation to speak and write his words as Moses did to have his temple rebuilt for his return in the day of the Lord. God has to speak to the man. That's me. To tell him that it was God that afflicted him with this figurement at birth, at birth and afflicted me with the disease. As it is said of the man described in Isaiah 53. And crushed my life. It must be a life-threatening disease, for God tells him that he might receive long life after choosing to crush him with disease. And in verse 12, it says he was exposed to death. And it was. God also has to prepare him to be a prophet. That's the fire of refinement. As he did Ezekiel. In the fire of refinement, in the hand of God, by his words and power, while teaching him the scripture to make the many righteous by his knowledge. Okay, I now know, not when I type this, everybody's going to be righteous. My, my job is more not to make the many righteous, but to keep as many of the righteous, which is, will be all of them, observant. Back to synagogue. Studying the Hebrew Bible, town that all things Jewish, because that's what the Jewish heaven is about. And that's my proof, uh, a proof of mine, is the knowledge that Elijah would have. The only man specifically taken to heaven, and he returns in the day of the Lord. What are you asking? Well, if you say you're Elijah, tell us about heaven. And this book, already has, I've already done it in this book. I know everything I need to know. God is not asking the man of 53 to give up his life as a sacrifice. That would be against his teachings to the Israelites, to his prophet, not to sacrifice their children. And the purpose of the man offering himself for guilt is to receive long life. Right, I've been told I had a month to live 22 years ago. Stage four cancer. And um, that's how you know I'm the fulfillment of Isaiah 53 10. The reality is there is no guilt or sin for the man to bear, no one to make righteous at that moment when I offered myself to go into the fire of refinement, become the righteous servant, make the many righteous, to remove their guilt. The new covenant with sin forgiveness of all the Jewish people on earth has arrived before the offering is made, and no vicarious suffering for the sins of others has occurred. Even though they say he was wounded for our sins, I was to, to help you remove you, uh, to stop sinning. I was wounded, punished, chastised, maltreated, crushed and bruised in the hand of God, as Ezekiel calls it, by his words and power. That is why it is only a test. It's my devotion to him that I would accept to go through the fire now, he didn't really explain it to me as well as he should have. <laughs> kind of held that a little bit. 
I've been in this fire for 16 years. And he'll say, well, the Jewish people have been through it from the minute they became the Jewish people, from when they arrived in the promised land, from that time. And he hid Moses for 40 years. Moses, <laughs> you want me to tell that one again? God had Isaiah write Isaiah 53, just as he had Moses write the Torah, at his command and direction. The multiple purposes of how Isaiah 53 is written were no more possible for Isaiah to know than Moses would know the multiple purposes of the Torah. And the 613 laws of God for the Jewish people, they have derived from its books, the first five books. The primary purpose of verse 10 is not the test of devotion. It is to make certain that the animal, sacrificial, atonement, and worship laws of the Torah cannot be used for the man to scribe. In other words, it's directed towards what he knew the Gentiles were going to do. They were going to get them a sin sacrifice in the form of a man. And they did. But they don't get it. He wrote 53 to slap that idea down. And we're going to do it here in the day of the Lord. God says we're going to take out the cornerstones of Christianity. And slowly, it will crumble. primary purpose it is the only reason God would crush a man with disease to make him be his servant. You cannot offer an animal with defect, an animal that is blemished. So God blemishes the man. No one would refuse God and God does not need a man's permission to make him a servant. He is God. In the book of Ezekiel, God seized him and made him suitable for the purpose of being a prophet to the Assyrian Babylon exile in God's fire refinement. Ezekiel said, the Spirit seized me, but of course that means God, and the Spirit had to live upon him and entered him. Ezekiel said, the Spirit had lit upon me, and I went in bitterness and the fury of my spirit in the hand of God. Well, you figure if you're in the hand of God, everything's going to be going good for you. <laughs> He's in the fire of fire and he's furious and bitter. I've been there hundreds upon hundreds of times. It's a way of changing your emotions to temper them, to calm them. Okay, this is verse 11, starting out with Rashi and his book. His, the way his verses read, terrible book. Sounds like some of the books that are still being used today as a translation. <clears throat> From the toil of his soul, he would see. He would be satisfied with his knowledge. My servant would vindicate the just for many and their inequities he would bear. Rashi, Midrash, from the toil of his soul, commentary, he would eat and be satisfied, and he would not rob and plunder. <laughs> from the toil of his soul, that's his commentary. <laughs> Still better than what I see out there today from Jews for Judaism and outreach Judaism. Tovia Singer, with his knowledge, would vindicate the just. Commentary, my servant would judge justly all those who came to litigate before him. My servant, that's Rashi. Yeah, but he's saying he's the righteous servant. He's saying, 53 describes the people, the Jewish people, gathered as one man, all of them, Israel. 
<laughs> but he says, my servant. And their iniquities he would bear. Commentary. He would bear in the manner of all the righteous. And it is said in Numbers chapter 18, verse 1. You and your son shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. <laughs> I don't know what that means. My verse 11, my commentary. Out of his anguish he shall see it. He shall enjoy it to the full through his devotion. My righteous servant makes the many righteous. It is their punishment he bears. You can find that in Ezekiel too. He was punished for the, for the sins of the house of Judah and Israel. Pinned to the ground for 430 days with his hands basically handcuffed behind him. And he wasn't allowed to turn from side to side for most of that. Well, I guarantee you, that, make you, that makes you angry. Get pinned to the ground. I've been slammed to the ground and pinned for like five days one time. I kind of deserved it. But he hadn't done that to me before. It was very surprising. And it's maltreating. And, and that's God maltreating you. And it, it really hurts your feelings. He, he draws all kinds of emotions from you. It's not just anger. The anguish is the emotional and physical pain. Ezekiel and I suffered by punishment in the power of God to be made suitable for his purpose. God's righteous servant, when he comes out of God's fire refinement, and the anguish of it is devoted I am devoted to God and will enjoy being the teacher of righteousness by his knowledge with long life knowledge a Gentile must be taught not only of the scripture but of the Jewish people their history the Middle East war Israel Palestinians terrorist groups and his government and all else he may need to know, like Abraham, a stranger in a strange land of a strange language. And just as Ezekiel was given knowledge in his fire of refinement, he said to me, did I give a sign? Well, this is out of the book of Ezekiel. God said to me, mortal, Eat what is offered you. Eat this scroll and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he gave me this scroll to eat. As he said to me, mortal, feed your stomach and fill your belly with this scroll that I give you. I ate it and it tasted as sweet as honey to me. Then he said to me, mortal, go to the house of Israel and repeat my words. This is him teaching Ezekiel the scripture as it was written for antiquity. They didn't even have schools back then. Nobody knew what teaching was. My righteous servant makes the many righteous. It is their punishment that he bears. Commentary. God's righteous servant is a man of pain, suffering, and wounds throughout his life orchestrated by God, with persistent hardships and troubles, grievously affected, especially by disease, and severely injured at one time or another, as though plague smitten and afflicted by God. It may include a gunshot to my abdomen, from one side to the other, uh, where my, it went through my bladder, give you an idea of how low the shot was, and just traveled vertically, from the uh, front right to the back left. And just about cut my right leg off at the knee. They almost took it off. I cut, I, I fell on a broken uh, glass Coke bottle, knee first. That was sticking up out of the ground with the bottom knocked off, real jagged. I <laughs> had impaled my knee. And they were gonna take it off, but a miracle occurred, the doctor just happened to be there 